You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Sure thing. I mean, look who you're talking to. Oh, well, in that case, you want to get help? Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today I'm kicking off my deep dive into the DC Multiverse Flash movie wave with the Flash himself. On that note, I just want to take a moment to point out I do know that Ezra Miller's personal pronouns are they, them. If at any point in this video I use the term he, I'm talking about the Flash character, not the actor. Starting off with the packaging, and because this is a movie figure, there are a few differences from usual. Down here we can see this is DC Multiverse, DC the Flash, the Flash. And on this side we can see this is DC the Flash, the Flash, the Flash. Flashity Flash Flash Flash. Looking at the barcode, we can see this is specifically the Speed Force Flash, and on the back we get some pretty decent artwork. It's become kind of a running joke on my channel to make fun of these busy movie boxes. Gratuitous hint of an upcoming video, by the way. I think it would be a lot simpler and cleaner to just switch out the DC Multiverse logo with whatever the movie logo is, and surely there's a better way than this. If we see on the side that it's the Flash movie, then this becomes unnecessary. I understand that this is all mainly pedantic, but for back Packaging, I'll give him the flash, half a point. Please don't hit me. Moving on to presentation, and Barry stands at a somewhat diminutive seven inches on the dot. The first pictures of this figure that I saw online weren't exactly prepossessing, but now that I have him in hand, I'm pretty impressed. I don't think I've ever seen a McFarlane diaphragm joint and diaper draw less attention to itself. In general, I've been pretty outspoken, I don't love this system, but this looks really good. I'm also really stunned by the paint job. The figure has gold piping throughout, and it's all very clean. Speaking of gold, I'm really digging the boots. Depending on which Barry Allen era that you're reading, his boots are either gold or red. With these being half and half, it feels like a nice compromise, and the swoopiness of the line work really evokes movement. Flipping him around, we see he has a gold belt that reaches mostly across. I don't know what these discs are at the end of his forearms, but the wrist balls are nice and well integrated, as are the ankles. I'm no cobbler, but I think some shoe company would probably make a pretty penny if they made some kicks based on this. Finally, we come to the head sculpt. Tiniest amount of chipping at the tip of the nose on mine, unfortunately. I'm having a hard time deciding if I think this actually looks like Ezra Miller. To me, it looks more like Cillian Murphy, but once I see the movie, I'll be in a better position to judge. I wish the hole for the mouth was a bit more angular and a bit less roundy, but I really like how they handled the lightning bolts on the side of the head. Being more flush with the mask makes more sense, and would likely make it more aerodynamic. One of my concerns was that Batman was going to so eclipse this line that the Flash himself was going to get the short end of the stick. I'm happy to report that is absolutely not the case. Not only is there just a fantastic amount of sculpted and painted detail, but the torso and diaphragm in particular give me a lot of hope moving forward. For presentation, I'm giving Speed Force Flash one whole point. Moving on to posability and all the joints are the same, so the real question is going to come down to range. The neck on this figure is particularly skinny, giving a lot of forward and back potential. Because of this, he can look up this far, which for a runner is perfect. He can also look down this far, just mind the gap. Great amount of tilt. Now this this is a look of somebody who's about to unload at karaoke night, and all the way around. Moving on down, his arms can reach just over 90 degrees, forward and back with the rotator cuff. Of course, he's got bicep swivel. This side is honestly really stiff and almost feels like it's going to snap. Really great bend on the double jointed elbows, though. And again, McFarlane wrist balls. Moving to the middle, and this is the part I'm most curious about. With the diaphragm and diaper being so much tighter, does that mean that the articulation is going to be less, or maybe even more? He can arch back this far, which isn't bad, but he's also rubbing up against against the belt, you get the impression he'd be able to arch back even more if it wasn't there. Hunching him forward though, and wow. Yes, it looks like he just broke his back, but this is one of the best forward bends I've seen in a McFarlane figure. Why, it's so good it just popped out. Looking inside, it does seem like the groove is a bit better than usual. Leastways, compared to Three Jokers Batman, which I happen to have right here. Of course, he gets a great amount of tilt and twist. Below the lightning bolt belt, and Barry has a typical McFarlane hips. As you can hear, they're pretty crunchy. They can also kick way over 90 degrees and do a perfect split. Not much twist in those hips, unfortunately, but he does have very very good double jointed knees, toe articulation, and McFarlane ankles that can swivel, hinge, and just like audience's opinion of Ezra Miller once they saw Michael Keaton in that trailer, pivot. 
Even as recently as the Hush Batman video, I was talking about how McFarlane articulation needs to improve, and it seems like it finally is. I'm happier with the torso articulation on this Flash than any DC Multiverse figure I've seen so far. And with the exception of the thigh swivel, the added range in the legs is very much appreciated as well. To reward an above and beyond effort for poseability, I'm giving this Flash one and a half points. Moving on to playability, and the Flash comes with a trading card and a figure stand. In the interest of spoilers, however, I'm not going to show you what it says. He also comes with a set of lightning effects. I don't know if there's any specific configuration, but you can clip them on pretty much anywhere. Some alternate hands would have been appreciated, but since it's Ezra Miller, I think we all know why they didn't include a pair of fists. And although this joke does pretty much write itself, playability is about how well your figure plays with others. Starting off with a small selection of similarly scaled flashes, and here we have the Snyder Cut. If only that figure had been given the same level of paint to detail as this one. For my favorite Flash, at least until the upcoming Flashpoint version comes out, here we have DC Essentials. Migrating back over to McFarlane though, and here we have Rebirth, and Grant Gustin from the CW series. Side by side, we can definitely see how the new one's torso has been improved. That said, for other members of the Flash family, and here we have Kid Flash, Jay Garrick, the original Flash of the Golden Age, and Impulse, who's just way too tall. For some villains though, and here we have Reverse Flash, Godspeed, who scales well with this figure and does look pretty like Live action, Gorilla Grodd from Injustice 2, and Dark Flash. There is a Dark Flash figure as part of this wave, but because I think he's going to be spoilery, I'm going to save that review for last. For some other DCEU figures, however, and here we have Dr. Fate, the Lightning Bolt emblazoned Black Adam, and Shazam, which I contend is still the best live action figure in DC Multiverse so far. Speaking of Shazam, and here we have the Fury of the Gods version of Wonder Woman. We'll be talking about this figure in an upcoming video, but for the rest of the live action Justice League, here we have Cyborg, the Snyder Cut version of Aquaman, Henry Cavill's Superman, and the Snyder Cut version of Batfleck. And while we'll be looking at the new Keaton figure soon enough, here we have the one from NECA, and here we have Batman from Three Jokers. You know, in case any of you want to do some customizing. For just a couple of other comic book Justice League members, and here we have Action Comics 1000 Superman, Endless Winter Aquaman, DC Essentials Green Lantern, and the DC Collectibles New 52 Wonder Woman. For a relative scale comparison, here is a flash with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. Hey, could you use your time travel powers to fix me? Sure. <laughs> eh? Not like this. Not like this. Hands down, this is the nicest figure of the Flash McFarlane has made so far. So much so that it makes figures that were already letdowns feel like even bigger letdowns by comparison. Whether or not they're reused, the inclusion of lightning effects is always welcome. And even though the DCEU as we know it is coming to an end, any addition to that display is appreciated. For playability, I'm giving this Flash one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Even though the standard price for DC Multiverse figures has gone up to $22.99, this wave seems to be available at most outlets for $19.99. For a well-sculpted, well-painted, well-articulated figure with multiple accessories, I couldn't be happier. Regardless of how you feel about Ezra Miller, this is an exceptionally well-executed action figure. If you're a fan of The Flash, get this Barry Allen before he's gone. Have I made the before he's gone joke before? I feel like I've made that joke before. For price, I'm giving the Flash one whole point for a grand total of five out of five. Are you excited for the Flash? And if so, is it more for the Flash himself or more for Batman? Sound off in the comments below. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.